so like the first, I would like to give some like numbers, you know, like um, uh, regarding like the market size. Um, so as, yeah, as all you know, like China has a very, very big population. So it's 1.4 billion, um, which is a lot of people. In the UK, you know, like 66 million. And the mobile internet population in China is like 870 million. So um, that's like the biggest like um, uh, market in, in the global wise. And mobile internet penetration is like 60%. Well, here is like 72%. And also give an idea like how many people live in the city side and how many people live in the rural area. So it's like roughly like 50-50. So in China, it's like 55% of the population lives in the city and 45 lives in the uh, rural area. So if you go to like Beijing, Shanghai, like the top, like the first um, tier cities, um, yeah, like internet penetration there is quite high. It's like 80-ish like percentage. But when you go to like a rural areas, it's like it's, it's, it's way less. So, and also probably you have heard of this. Um, yeah, there are some like special rules in China. Um, you know, like Google, Facebook, Twitter, like these kind of like giants are blocked in China market. It's because of the policy uh, issue. Um, and uh, also they have like great firewall, which is like they basically monitor all the traffic you know, like incoming and out outgoing. So basically, if you want to like vi visit like Google or like uh, YouTube, you are like um, banned because of the Great Firewall. So uh, yeah, so that's kind of like special rules in China. So as you know, like this is also like quite big market, right? Now it has like the biggest population of like the middle class. So a lot of people want to compete in the markets, and because of the size, but it's actually quite difficult to survive in this market. Um, so these are like on the left, these are like all like, like top giants um, from like the US or like or the like West. So Google came and left um, quite, quite a few years ago. And Amazon came and I think they left this year. Um, Facebook, Twitter never came to the market. Um, the Uber came and China division was acquired um, by DD. So there are quite a few like reasons why these are like, happening. Um, so for, of course, like in the government plays a role um, because they want also like try to raise up like the, their own like companies. But also I think what's, um, what is quite important is like the China market is quite different and also the customers are quite different from like the Western um, markets. So not only in China, but t like in general, like in, in Asia, it's very hard for Google to compete. So for example, in South Korea, they, they, they use like a neighbor, right? Rather than Google. So they also have like their, their own like a social network. So they use like Kakao Talk rather than, uh, you know, like a WhatsApp or a Facebook Messenger. So um, yeah, and also like for, for now, like for all like the companies like on the left, they also have like equivalents companies in, in China. So I would say, yeah, I don't see like for now any like exception that, uh, you know, like Western company actually like become like super successful in the China market. And also like for Airbnb, I don't think like the government plays, you know, try to like, place any roles there, but uh, actually they are having a very tough time with the customers. Um, so, so who are like the big players in the, in the market? So they are like top two companies, which is like in terms of like a market valuation. So they are like two, four billion size um, company. So which is like a 10 cents and also Alibaba. So for your reference, like a 10 cents is like equivalent as Facebook. So they dominate like the social network. Uh, and also like Alibaba is like equivalent to uh, um, Amazon. So it's like e-commerce. So you can, you can like buy like all the stuff online. And there are quite a few like five, uh, 50 billion um, dollar size company. So like um, Baidu JD and uh, Meituan DD. And uh, yeah, so these are like pretty much like all the um, uh, unicorns and the big companies on, on these charts. Um, cool. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah? Just a quick one. Why is it challenging? You might have said that I'm not doing good. Why is it challenging for Western companies to transition into China or the Eastern world while company 
is on the Eastern world, like Alibaba, I'm, I'm not 100% familiar with the other brands, but why is it, or how come Alibaba is able to transition easily to the Western world? Because many Western mm. consumers use Alibaba from both a consumer perspective and a B2B perspective, while the Western world is ch ch challenged or struggling to position within the Eastern market. Maybe you can shed some light. Um, sure. So, yeah, uh, I was told I need like repeat your question, you know, for, for the camera. Okay. So, so basically, like the question is, um, why is it like more difficult for um, like Western companies to like compete in China market mm -hmm. compared with like Chinese market um, companies competing in, in, in the West? Yeah, so basically, I, I think there are like, you know, like a lot of like reasons behind. So, and for each company, it might, um, might be different. Yeah, as far as I know, you know, a lot of companies also like struggling uh, a lot um, when Chinese companies come abroad. So they have been, like, for, for instance, like WeChat has been really like trying to push really hard to, um, to come to Europe or North America, but they didn't succeed, so they withdrew. They were quite successful in Southeast Asia, but they, it's very hard for them to compete here and also like in North, North America. Like also, like, I think like the only like very successful example I can think of which is quite successful is like TikTok. I, I, I found like a lot of people like start like to use like TikTok here. So that's, yeah, that's probably, I don't know like much how it's going on with like B2B with like Alibaba, but that's like an only successful example I can think of. So um, yeah, but later on I have like some slides sharing, you know, like the difference between customers. Mm -hmm. And I think it's actually very hard for you to understand the local market if you don't grow up here. Because basically when you like develop a product, right, it's just like a basic to meet like the requirements or like demands um, from the customers. But if you don't grow up here, if you don't have like the local knowledge, it's just like very, very hard for you to find like a touching point um, from the customers. There are a lot of like unicorns and a lot of like, like medium sized companies. And somehow they are all kind of like um, backed by BAT. So BAT is like buy to Alibaba and Tencent. So I think Tencent itself is like one of the biggest um, and capital, advent, uh, capital venture in, in the market. So they invested a lot in different types of companies and they cover basically all the areas. No matter if you go to like education or like you, if you want to you know, have like um, buy anything like online or um, so basically they all invest like unicorns and all like leading companies in that field. So there's actually like a saying, they say, if you start your business, you need to like choose your side. Either way, you stay with like Tencent or you stay with Alibaba. Otherwise, it's very hard for you to compete. And also like probably, yeah, like China has also been like a copycat before, you know, to try to copy what is like new in the markets in, in the US or like in, um, or like from here. And I think starting a couple of years ago, they kind of like have a bit more, um, more like original ideas. So for example, um, probably, yeah, here like, you can also see a lot of like bike sharing, right? So in London you find like OFO or like a Mobike. So actually they, um, they, they, this like was a huge thing like a couple of years, uh, couple of years ago. So I will share a bit more like uh, about like a uh, um, bike sharing. And another thing is like the um, mobile payments. So actually, like personally, when I first moved to, uh, to the UK, like one thing I really miss or one thing I really like, get used to here is I want to use my mobile payment. But here, so everyone is like, using a contactless. Um, so that's, I was struggling for quite a while. But for now, I, I don't miss anymore. Cause, um, and also, there's a, a, one, one like, a new type of service on the right. It's like, uh, like self-serving uh, self like a vendor machine. So basically, here, just like, scan your QR code, take the items, then you leave. So they deploy a lot of like these kind of like shelves and uh, vending machine uh, in offices. Um, so these, these are kind of like a new type of services. So for, for bike sharing, um, this was like a huge thing and it's, coming, it's becoming like a boom thing like in, in the China market starting from 2016. So Mobike and OFO, they are like the market leaders in, in the market. Um, in the bike sharing market. And in two years, they got $1 billion funding for each. So basically, like, I think Mo Mobike was founded in 2016. 
and in two and OFO was like a bit earlier. I think it's 2015. So for these, actually, like it's it's a very good example, like how like the capitals you know rush into like a new field and it really like blow the blooms of the of this uh, uh, industry. Um, it's kind of like quite crazy. So that's basically like what you see in, in Beijing Street. It's like all packed with like the uh, with the bikes. But sometimes, you know, with too much ca capital, it can also be a disaster for, for the market. Like a mobile bike actually was sold last year for $2.7 billion. And OFO is on the edge of bankruptcy. Because this is basically like, in the beginning, like people feel very, very, very excited. Because like, imagine how many times you take a taxi a day, right? Compared with how many times you, you need to use a bike. So they would assume like the frequency um, of using a bike is much higher than you take a taxi. So they produce like so much bikes because they want to dominate like the, uh, um, the market without any, lot, any of like the consideration of like the cost. So in the end, it become like a grave for all the, uh, for all the bikes. And the business model is not uh, self-sustainable. Um, I think like one successful example of this like type of new um, mobile service is like the mobile um, payments. So like the mobile payments grew like 27 times. I mean like the turnover in, in five years. So um, I went back to China like last year. Um, so I stayed there for one week, uh, two weeks, sorry. Um, I didn't withdraw any cash from, uh, from, the, from the banks. So I just carry my mobile phone go anywhere, you can, you can just like pay with your mobile phone and that's it. And it's like the type of like the payment is slightly different from like how people pay with like Apple Pay. So Apple Pay just like, it's also kind of like a contactless, right? But in um, like a mobile payment with like Alipay and WeChat Pay, which is like a top two pay, a mobile payment provider, it's like scan, uh, scan like a QR code. So no, no matter where you go, just scan your QR code and you, you made a payment. So like still like for now, it's still like growing quite, quite fast. And there was like a statistics that 45% of like the Beijing household, now they are spending, uh, you know, make all the spendings on their mobile phones. So you can easily like, portray, like buy your train tickets on your mobile phone. The vendor machine um, is like good self. So basically this is also um, what was quite popular last year and uh, a year before is they deployed a lot of like, um, like vendor machines. So everything like you can easily like, you know, like pick up anything you want. Then you, you scan this QR code here, then you make the payments and then you leave. Cause like the problem that you're trying to solve is for a lot of like vendor machines, like in office, you always need like prepare, like pre um, have your card ready or Right, or like charges or your coins ready, like changes and the coins. So they find it's like, actually it's like a pain point. Like if it's like so much trouble to pay, then I don't want to buy it. So their assumption is I make everything super easy. You take the items, you scan the QR code, then you leave. But the problem comes with what if I pick up the items, I leave and I don't pay. So that's actually, a very big challenge for this business model. And later on, they come up, come up with another solution is they tag every single item with like RFID. So basically put everything. So currently like the open shelf, they don't, they get rid of like open shelf. So they have like this kind of like sealed like a vendor machine. So you can, you can still easily open up the gates and take items and then left. But if you don't make the payments, then they give you a alert. So basically it is like all the items, every single item have the RFID, right? So they would be able to know if you have paid, like made the payments for the, for the items you took out of like the, um, the, this, this box. Um, so there's still like a big argument um, about whether this like business model is sus um, sustainable or not. And uh, yeah, we will find out maybe like this year or, or the next. Um, 
because like the the biggest issue actually they have is like they found a lot of people just took the items without pay, making the payments, and they actually like they had a very like good assumption in the beginning because they, they were thinking if it's in office, you kind of like you you know you are, you actually like watched by your colleagues, right? If you don't make like the payments, then you don't feel you know right about it. But it seems like a lot of people don't feel this way. And this slide is about like the venture capitals. Um, so actually, like last year, um, there are actually like um, more capitals rushing into the China market. So the like, first time is overpass uh, the, the U.S. So a lot of like hot money rushed to the market. Yeah, I don't know like what's going to happen after like the trade war uh, between these two countries. Um, but because of, like the sea, um, the potential growth of the middle class in, in the China markets. So basically, this is this slide is about you know like it's actually a quite competitive market. A couple of months ago, there's like quite quite a big like scandal, which is like a nine and six. So it become like a big big thing on the internet because all the engineers and the people working in internet companies complaining that they need to work from like a nine a.m. to nine p.m. and the six days a week. So people go crazy about it. And um, personally, like according to my uh, own working experience, I quite get to the point. Because like, before when I was working in Beijing, every day I walk out of the office, it's always like a darkness outside. So, uh, well, like I went to work normally at like, nine, uh, no, like 10 a.m. in the morning. And about the time I left the office, it's like 9, 9 p.m. So it's quite a long, long hour working. I mean, for sure, they, they give you like one hour, or like one half hours for, for lunch break. Um, but still, I mean, like working hours is way, way longer there. So completely no work-life balance. And people still like do everything like very aggressive. So if you want to like release a feature, you basically have a, have a, have a meeting. And after the meeting, it takes, let's say, two or three days um, to develop. And that feature would be released like in five or six, six days. So like everyone like really like try to push hard to make like the uh, release like work very fast. And if you if they want find something um, that is like kind of like a touching point for for the customers, then they like push everything like very aggressively. And this is like the marketing um, difference. And when you do like a digital marketing, it's also quite quite different um, here. So for iOS, for sure everyone goes to an app store to download. But for Android, it is quite different. Um, so like here, everyone, you know, like go to Google Play and uh, download apps. But if you go to uh, China market, uh, these brands, yeah, probably have seen them before. But these actually where the traffics are. And that's where people go and download. The reason is basically it's quite simple. Um, Google Play is blocked uh, in China. So there are a lot of like third party um, app stores in, in the China market. Yeah, also there are a lot of like actions that has been taken um, for, for the China, uh, China, Chinese companies because they found it's so competitive you know, to compete within the country. So actually a lot of companies now um, go to uh, Southeast Asia and also come to, to Europe or North America. So they acquired uh, quite a few um, companies um, here. So like Skyscanner was, uh, was acquired by C-Trip. I think that's happened like three, three years ago. And also like Supercell and World First. And also like Alipay is trying to enter like the Harvard's uh, here and also Selfridges. Um, basically, they just provide you know a new way of payments because they found that a lot of like Chinese tourists came to uh, came there to shopping, and also um, if you want to like get your tax back, right, like a tax return, if you go to uh, uh, Heathrow, and you can easily get uh, get your money back on the Alipay. So you just like fill in like your Alipay, then you like send out the envelope. That's it. Yeah, this this one is about like how I personally feel, um, you know, like working in two different um, places. Because I was having, you know, quite a few like interviews uh, um, before. So when I was, when I was having interview in, in China, like we, we just talk about, you know, like how you feel about the market and how, how you feel about, you know, like the match between the market and products. 
and how you understand the market. So they really, really give me like, you know, like a, a task and they say, okay, finish this task, send, 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 send me back like the answer and we will give feed, uh, feedback. Yeah, that really, really happened to me uh, when I was having an uh, interview in, in China. When I was having an interview here, I feel like uh, everyone is uh, talking about like a methodology, right? It's, everyone is talking about, have you worked with like uh, uh, in an agile way before? Have you used, uh, you know, like um, Scrum methodology before? Like how do you create the tickets? Um, how do you solve like a problem? Yeah, as far as I remember, I've never been asked um, have you used agile, uh, agile way of like development before? So uh, when I was in China, so this is I, I feel like it's quite 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 different, right? Like people here feel like a, a bit more like more practical, and they like hire you because you want they want like you to solve them, like help them to solve a problem. But well, in China, like, people just like they just talk, right? They just talk, you know, how how you feel about the market, and how you develop, and that's it. So that's kind of like a different different you know like a way of like a mindset behind which I find is quite interesting. So, like on this, yeah, this is actually my personal WhatsApp um, uh, screenshot. I have like used like WhatsApp for four or five years. And to be honest, I don't feel like there are much changes, you know, like if I compare like what's WhatsApp is now with like five years ago. Um, I don't even know what they have done, you know, like for, for WhatsApp. And these two slides, um, they are like WeChat um, screenshots. So as you can see here, um, it's also very, very different like mindset, right? When you like develop a product. Because like for us, I don't understand why WhatsApp can be like consistent for, for years. Like what did they do? I don't quite get it. But maybe it's also quite difficult for like the customers in the UK or in Europe to understand why WeChat build up so many stuff, and it's not relevant um, with social networking. So basically, the, like on WeChat, you can um, you can go to like e-commerce website to purchase stuff. You can pay your utility bill. You can take a taxi, um, and also you can top up like your mobile phone. So it's like completely like not relevant um, to a social network, but still they are doing it and it's very popular. A lot of people use it and people really love it. So this kind of like, you know, that's a bit like a more culture thing, right? It's like, if you don't grow up there, if you don't, you're not local, it's very hard for you to understand. And also the next example is, um, if I compare like the e-commerce website, so on, on the left is like a home screen of uh, Amazon. And on the right, it's a JD and a Taobao, which is like the top two e-commerce website. As you can see, like the style is also quite, is dramatically like, different. Here it's like super clean. It feels like you don't, you cannot buy much on the website. Just come here and like, um, just like some um, speakers there. But here, probably like for European like customers, you probably feel like a bit overwhelmed because like too many, too, too much. And also like the color they use is also quite different. Like here, it gives you like a more calm and clean feeling, but here it give, gives you like more like a warm and uh, you know, like a crowded feeling, right? And that's actually like quite interesting if you also compare how um, Walmart looks like and if also like a display uh, in the Walmart, and if you go to like a local Chinese supermarket, it's also quite different. Like in Walmart, it's quite, you know, it's, it, it, you have like a lot of like open space. And in the local Chinese supermarket, probably like, even like in the um, supermarket here, they probably like the area is like about this wide, and you really need to struggle, you know, like to, to walk in. Because like, this, this actually like some like, a, um, psychological like uh, thinking behind is like Chinese people would like it's the more um, they are more into shopping when they feel like there are a lot of things to buy and when they f when they feel like there are uh, products everywhere then they are more like attempt to to make the purchase but here people feel more like they need like privacy you know like space and feel more comfortable 
to, to make the uh, um, purchase. So that, that's, that's very different. And again, back to your questions before, you know, like it's very hard to understand these kind of things if you, if you don't like, you know, like. Yeah, and also like there are a lot of like uh, other differences. Um, so I worked in Yarm here, which is like the mother company of KFC Pizza Hut. So I helped the company to build up like their first e-commerce uh, web website. And back in China, I was um, uh, helping Baidu to take, um, to have like the takeaway like products. And so I know some like insights of like these two um, products. And it's quite interesting. We found the Chinese customers, they ordered um, much more lunch compared with dinner. But here, um, people order like way, way more um, dinner com compared with lunch. I won't be able to understand it until like I like stayed here for, for two years because I figured it's quite interesting. Like, people here, they, they can easily go, like, go, go to the supermarket, grab like a sandwich, right? And that's, uh, that's, that's lunch. But in Chi if you work in China, um, they always give you like one, one hour or one and a half hours. Or sometimes companies even give you like two hours. So you have time to have a proper lunch. Yeah, it's, it's very, very rare for people to just go to the supermarket grab something from the shelf and that's it. They always need to sit and have like a proper like hot food, hot meal as a decent, um, decent lunch. So that's, again, you know, that's the difference, you know, like for customers. Yeah, and also like another thing is here, like you always get like the service first, then you pay. But that's why like people hit bills, right? Um, but in, in China market, you always pay, then you get your service. So actually, like, I already know how much I'm going to pay. Then I decide whether I want it or not. But here it feels like, so for example, if you're in China, if you don't pay your like, electricity bill, it's cut off. So you literally need to pay first, then you can like, use your electricity. But here, for example, I probably, like, first I don't know like, how much like, I was charged by electricity, probably like after three months, I was like overcharged and I have to pay it because I received the bill. So that's also quite, quite an interesting thing um, for these two markets. So like the last slide is about some like potential opportunities that I think um, that can be, um, can be done here. Because again, that's quite personal. Um, like first, I think it's like mobile, mobile payments. I think it's still like from what I what have observed is still have a lot of like potentials um, for mobile payment. For example, um, what if you can pay with your uh, like utility bills on your mobile phone? But here it's like, but you need to have like a very solid like the um, like the whole payment in infrastructure to be built. Then you can build like a service on top. But here we don't have like a unified like um, a dominance mobile payments. So that's why it's very hard for you to um, build something on top. For example, if you go to like a website, make a purchase, you always need to you know, fill in your bank cards, sort code and everything, um, rather than you can just like scan, scan it, and then you click one button and that's it. So um, that's one thing. And also like O2O business, I think it's also quite, quite interesting. Um, because like a labor here, because like, like the, the, the cost, cost structure of like O2O -O business can be like dramatically different. Like this labor, labor cost is quite cheap in China, uh, but here it's quite, quite expensive. So when you think of like O2O -O business in China, a lot of people go, a lot of business go bankrupt. They cannot make enough money from like the, um, the people who deliver the, um, the O2O -O business, but here, I figured like, it's, it's quite popular for you like, to do like, the laundry uh, online. And also like, you can order uh, like, delivery rule, right? Because like, they, they make about like, four or five pounds for each order they deliver. But if you think of like, how much people they make in China, if you make a deliver, delivery, it's like 60, 60p for each delivery. So like, the cost structure is quite, it's very, very different. 
And the last bit is like the fintech. And I think a very, very good thing about like the fintech in the UK is like they open up all the, uh, a lot of like data for the public um, access because of like a PSD2 and also like open banking. Um, so you basically can get all the uh, data information and also even like the payment information, which is not um, like we don't, like in China they don't have it. So um, yeah, for sure this can also be a big opportunity here. Um, I think that's the last one.